Hi again, everyone. I'm Ali Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Eve. And this is a follow up to <clears throat> The Narcissist Makes You Think You'll Never Be Believed. And here is her story. Hi, Ali. The Hi, Ali in the community. I want to start by saying thank you guys so much. The comments were so supportive and really uplifting. I tried to thank everyone that commented. Thank you for sharing your stories, too. It helped me get through the week, guys. So here's the second part of my story. I stopped on the part where I left my where I left with my stepfather after he returned home to drop off the guy who molested me when I was about six or seven. So I moved back to Freeport with my stepdad. Occasionally in the beginning, I was visiting my mother. The visits were never consistent. I think it was because when he'd come to get me, she wouldn't let me leave and I end up staying until she lost her place to live. This happened often. We'd be living with someone and suddenly be put out. One example of this is when we stayed with a friend from high school. I liked her and she had two sons my age. She was letting my mom stay to be a good friend. One day I remember my mom being frantic, telling me to get my stuff because we're leaving. She said that that lady was putting us out, something about the girl, the girl believing her boyfriend over her, that he was trying to come on to her, but told the girlfriend that it was my mom who had pursued him. And I'm sure it was. I mean, I'm sure that's the type of person your mother is. I cried as I packed my thing. She kept yelling and crying about how everyone was always, always put her out and how she hadn't done anything wrong, that everyone was just jealous, that it was wrong for her to believe, in him, believe him over her because they were friends. We had nowhere to go. We ended up packing our things to a vacant apartment on the edge of the complex where the girl had lived. There were no lights or electricity. She would leave me there alone for hours, even half and whole days alone with an extension cord running from the outside of the house to watch TV on the black and white or HV a lamp or, or have a lamp lit. She eventually got a job in a grocery store. She lost that job. She never kept a job and the reason it always had to do with the women being jealous of her. Because she said what your mother does. See, I think your mother's the type that likes to steal other people's men. Other women's men. That's how she competes with them, by taking other people's men. A little after that, I ended up back in Freeport. And this is the game. I'd come visit. She'd cry like she needed me. I'd say we'd end up. I'd stay, we'd end up homeless, and on it went. I never stayed at one school. She ripped me out of schools like a sport. One school I attended while in her care, she had me wear these tight dresses to class. Exactly, because now she's trying to pimp you out. Now she's trying to whore you out. This is how your mother, this is how your mother operates. The boys would stare at me and grab my butt at that age, and I didn't understand what they saw. I didn't like it there, and we ended up moving away. The next school I ended up at one of the boy, I ended up at one of the boys mauled me on the playground. He pushed me down and climbed on top of me, pulling down my underwear and ripping at my clothes. He even hit me. The clothes I wore were appropriate, I guess. She, uh, she always had me in dresses sewn by her boyfriend's grandmother with a giant with giant ruffled socks and millions of ribbons. She called it she called it dressing me like a little girl should look. Anyway, I tried to fight him off, but this kid at our age, which was eight, was sure sure of what he was trying to do. I wrestled with him, screaming to get off me and stop. This was happening at recess and other students around. I know this sounds made up, but there, here's the part where you really think I'm crazy. I just remember telling my mom and her dragging me to the school for a meeting. I felt like I was in trouble. My mom went in, in the room and talked with the family, comes out and says the boy isn't in trouble. She wasn't pressing charges because she could tell he was slow and didn't mean it. That his family looked like they were going through enough. All the way, all the way there, she talked about how no one had the right to touch me that way, but she didn't stand up for me.
the whole thing looked like a misunderstanding that I overreacted to. This also happened to me at school while I was living with my stepdad and his new girlfriend. A boy did the same thing to me at school while I was living with my stepdad and his new girlfriend. Charges were filed. I was in middle school, I believe, maybe just starting. My dad and his girlfriend felt it would be better for the other family and godly if he just dropped the charges because the boy was sorry and the mother didn't have much and was doing the best she could. See, this is what happens in the black community. Really? Really what it is? Let me, let me explain to you. Not only were you being whored out, okay? They're playing ghetto lottery. And what ghetto lottery is, is who can I sue? If something happens, can I sue for it? And once they realize there's no money to be made and nobody to sue, ah, well, that's nothing. That's a dead end. That's a dead end. You're a pawn. You're just a pawn to both your mother and your stepfather. Both look in the play, get a lotto. This would be the second time my stepfather would brush under the rug me being sexually abused. They made me feel like a liar. I now knew that if anyone ever touched me that way again, it'd best be I'd best be to keep my mouth closed. No one would ever believe me and no one would ever care. We never talked about it. It was clear that I was never to bring it up. Everyone in Freeport and that family hated me now, the women anyway. No one likes a black woman who calls out a family member or anyone in the community as a child molester. Exactly. And this is what continues to go on. This is what continues to go on. I guarantee you if there was money to be made... I guarantee you if there was money to be made, though, they wouldn't have a problem. It's like a single, it's like you're single-handedly trying to destroy every black man alive to them. Unless you were beaten nearly to death, bringing things up like that makes other women hate you. We lived in a country, we lived in a country in a small, in a county in a small town, all about church and high school. Everyone knew about whatever mom had done to him, and I'm sure that was embarrassing enough. The women treated me like a troublemaker. Yeah, because they think you did something. It didn't help that she had dropped me off and left, but the trouble she caused when they were together and married was enough for the woman to hate me for the rest of the time I had to live there. My mother would stir up confusion, flirting with his brothers, sleeping around, running off, and being disrespectful, and this was a Christian family very involved, involved in the church. She made a mess of everything and then left me there for my grandma and aunt to mistreat because they hated her. I was told by my stepdad's sister, Nanette, I'd never be anything but a welfare recipient, that I was dumb, that I'd be just like my mother, that I'd never have shit. I was called a fool and stupid. My Nanette would leave perms in my hair until it burned my scalp and I'd cry and my grandma would sit by like she didn't hear a word. I wore winter coats until they were too small and was dressed like a boy. Christmas, I would get shitty gifts and be made to look like an ungrateful jerk if I cried because I felt treated unfairly. I would be invited on a, on a kid's outing just to be pit against my male cousin who, always, who also ended up in this family because he was taken from his mom too. And yes, like me who wasn't the actual child of the father who was in my st who was my stepdad's brother if you can even follow what I'm saying. Yeah, everybody goes lives with everyone else. Okay, so you're not even living with your mother, you're living with your stepfather. He's got another stepkid coming in. It... This is what happens. And then most of the kids end up getting molested and turning violent. The women just selling their just basically getting their value through their vaginas and ripping down the other women in their family. I loved my cousin. It was clear everyone else did too. They just tolerated me. So I'd act out when Nanette, my stepdad's sister, would come around. I'd whisper that she was a fat cow under my breast so only she could hear. 
Then she'd scream for my grandma to tell on me. And yes, this is a grown-ass woman, and I was only nine. I also learned that Nanette had been had been in trouble for burning kids' hands on a hot stove at a daycare she worked at. This is what happens. These women should not be anywhere near each other. This is what happens. These are not unusual stories coming out of the black community. They're just not. Mom told Mom told me the story. They didn't this didn't stop her from leaving me with them just like getting molested didn't. This was covered up by the family and never brought up. Nanette was the only daughter of my stepdad's siblings. My stepdad stayed friends with the guy that molested me. He said he still would take me by the guy's house and visit his family like nothing happened. I think he secretly hated me. He never spent time with me, worked long hours, and would have and would leave me with his mom most of the time, or at home in Angleton, two towns away, in a trailer by myself for most of the time. I'd known if I'd know if he had come home if I woke up and in their cereal on the counter. I I spent a lot, really most of my childhood alone. The family was very church involved. My stepdad was even an usher on board on, on the usher board. I went to church three or four times a week, sometimes when I was in I was with his mom and I was enrolled in a year round school, which meant I didn't get out for the whole for the summer. My mom would make surprise phone calls once in a blue moon, crying and screaming I was stolen and had come up with a way to get her back to get back to her. Then the call stopped and I had stopped visiting her. I didn't hear from her for a few years and thought she was dead. No one would tell me what was wrong and no one was concerned about how this affected me. I loved my parents, but they hated each other and I just had to deal. I think my stepdad hated me too, even with, even he would say, I'm just like my mom and I would never be anything. They would just exchange looks at the mere mention of her like they knew things I didn't. The new woman he was with now hated me too. She had two boys and they moved into the trailer with us. She would deny me food and ignore me, was even given permission to whip me. One day when I was at with, one day I went to school with bruises and the police got involved. This was the only chance to get back to my mom, Ollie. I took it. I was thirteen, I hadn't seen my mom in forever. I, I stopped visiting after eight or nine. I think so. I hadn't seen her for, for, for that long. Now I could get back to her like she told me to. But God help me. I had no idea what I was going back to. I'll end this here. Sorry this is so long. I'll sense part three as soon as I can. Side note, later in life I found out that the lady put my mom out because she was sleeping with her boyfriend. Yeah, that's what I told you. Your mother's just a whore. Why I was being molested so often as a child, up until 13, I had been molested by four people that I can remember on multiple occasions, and that's not counting after 13. Maybe I was doing something wrong unconsciously. I always believed in God, and I always wanted to be a good girl. It just seems unreal, like, some, like something I should never share. Much love, all. Eve. The reason you keep getting molested is because you're in a community that looks the other way. That's why you keep getting molested is because you've been sexualized as a child. Everything about the community is sexualized. Everything about your mother is sexualized. She gets her value through stealing other people's men. And now, because you're her daughter, all that is projected on to you. In the meantime, the rest of everybody's molesting everyone. Okay, and soon as they realize there's no, and I'm telling you what they're doing here. Why the big front? Okay, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna lock them up. We're gonna do something. They're thinking money, and once they realize there's no money to be made, ah, well, you know, might as well just continue on with the sexual abuse. That's what goes on. So, 
I look forward to part three, Eve. Thank you again for another contribution and story. I really appreciate it. I hope this helps. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful, because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you guys. Without you, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance.